blockchain. I'm telling you that it's here in 20C and I need you to control your excitement. Here's a warning on blockchain, even though it's a pretty cool feature. I'm telling you that it's here in 20C and I need you to control your excitement. Let's do a bit of background first about what blockchain is, because most people, when you talk about blockchain, you know what they think about? How am I gonna make money off Bitcoin? You know, they're looking at the share price for Bitcoin, that's how they may. Blockchain is not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an a application, for lack of a better term, that takes advantage of the blockchain technology. This is a very simplified explanation, but basically a way of understanding how the blockchain architecture works and how we've therefore implemented such a thing in Oracle 20C. You start off with some sort of financial transaction. I'm, and in fact, I should say any transaction, anything which involves data. I'm using finances here. My bank balance is zero. That's generally not too far from the truth. My salary comes in at $200. That's a transaction. What I don't want is the bank jumping in there and saying, actually, we think it was 180. We don't, I don't want them tinkering with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hash that information. That transaction has a hash. I'll apply a hash function to the entire block and that comes up with a new hash that actually belongs on the block. Now, my next transaction comes in. This will be, I'm gonna buy food so I don't starve to death. So the balance is 200, I, buy, I spend $50 on food, I'll hash that transaction. I'll combine that with the hash of the previous transaction block, combine those two things to come up with a brand new hash for that block and I can link the two together. You can see the little arrow. I have the commencement of a chain of blocks. And then the next transaction might be spending my 30 bucks a month on my phone bill. So my balance for 150, it'll drop to 120. I hash that transaction, hash the previous block to come up with a new hash and so forth and so forth. I have this chain of blocks, hence blockchain, of information where the hash functions link one block to the next or one block to the previous. Why is this really, really good in terms of security? Is because what if someone wants to come along and tamper with this? They wanna tamper with say my food transaction. They say, actually, no, we wanna manipulate that. We wanna actually diddle the number and say you actually spent $80 on food. The supermarket is trying to have one over on me. To do that, they would have to regenerate the hash for that transaction, but also regenerate the hash for that block, which implicitly means they have to regenerate the hash for every subsequent block and the hashing function is expensive to do. And that's the premise behind blockchain. The cost of tampering is prohibitive. You simply could not tamper anything in the blockchain without having to reevaluate all the other hashes as well. That's expensive or virtually impossible. Therefore, the information is tamper-proof. Vast simplification of the actual tech that's going on and the algorithms, but hopefully you get the idea. If you have sufficient hashes on all the information and those hashes are expensive and complicated to maintain or create, then you have tamper-proof data. That's super cool, but how could you do it in a database? Because databases have tables. You know, you can do updates, inserts, deletes. They are designed to be tampered with. So let's do a quick demo. So this is a Oracle 20 database. Now, to set the scene here, I'm gonna create a brand new pluggable database first. I'm gonna do our demos in there. We'll see the importance of that if you're gonna start playing with 20C, that you maybe adopt this process as well. So a brand new pluggable called db20pdb2. I'm gonna create a user called demo in there, give it the normal stuff, some quota, some resource, just privileges enough to create a table. And I create this new thing in 20C called a blockchain table. It just looks like the normal information you put on the table. There are a whole stack of hidden columns on there as well. That's for another office hours talk. This is about controlling your excitement with blockchain tables, not in terms of the functionality expose. So I've created the table, there's nothing in it, which means I can drop it. Sweet. But of course, that's not much use to me as a blockchain table. So I'm gonna recreate it again and put a row in because I'm excited by this new technology. That's cool. I've finished playing, I've had a little explore. That's cool, I try to drop it. I'll connect to sys because after all, sys is God. Sys cannot drop that table. Nothing can drop a blockchain table until its expiry date is reached. Um, I should have mentioned that. The example I hear was actually 16 days. That table is there for 16 days. Maybe if I drop the entire user. Nope. You cannot even drop the user. That table is there, that user is there 
for the next 16 days, period. That's what I wanted to explain and warn you about. If you jump in and start playing with these things on 20C, your preview release, be aware that blockchain tables currently are there to be not to be tampered with. The whole concept of blockchain is you can't tamper, including drop. It's an interesting scenario here. It's like, what are we going to do like in terms of, well, what if I've got things like unit testing or integration testing, or I've got those kind of continuous delivery things? Uh, that's something I think that internally at Oracle, we may have to tackle. We might have to come up with, for lack of a better term, fake blockchain tables or temporary blockchain tables, something that lets you not treat it as a real blockchain table. But out of the box in 20.1, that's what it is. It is a genuine, robust, cannot be tampered with, foolproof blockchain table. The only way you can get rid of a blockchain table at the moment is the same reason I created a brand new pluggable for it. You have to drop the entire pluggable database to get rid of a schema which contains a blockchain table. You need to be aware that you cannot drop them in any way, shape or form without blowing away your entire database in this iteration of 20C.